Welcome back to this SUP Border video where I'm going to be talking about welded rail technology. Do you know what it is? Do you know why you should have it on your inflatable paddleboard? Well, it's a very important process that goes into making the best ISUPs in the world, and it really is a process that you should be paying attention to when you're potentially buying your next board. Check out this full video to find out what it's all about. Remember everyone, subscribe to our YouTube channel yet yeah, if you haven't already, there's loads of videos that go on there weekly, whether it's learning the newest technique or finding out which potential bit of kit is worth buying. So in this video, we really are gonna be talking about starboard welded rails. Now, as far as we know, starboard are pretty much the pioneers of welded rail technology, and that is what they say makes their board better than the rest. They have extremely low warranty rates. One in a thousand boards gets warrantied since they've introduced welded rail technology. Okay, so what is the term welded rails and where is it used in the manufacturing process to make an inflatable paddleboard? Well, the basic way to look at it is when you make an inflatable paddleboard, you have to join two layers together, the top layer and the bottom layer and they are joined at the rail of the side of the board. Traditionally, those two top and bottom layers would have been glued together. But instead of conventional gluing, Starboard worked out that if you actually melted the two layers of PVC and bonded them together at that time when they were the hottest, they would make a mechanical bond and they would actually melt together, very much like somebody doing a weld when they're doing steel or metal fabrication. For obvious reasons, it's very important you have a strong rail bond onto your board. It is the first area that is gonna start leaking. Paddling a leaking board really isn't very good for your performance, and it's only gonna get worse unless it's immediately fixed. And in more extreme cases, a small, slow leak can suddenly turn into a very extreme leak where your complete rail breaks down and you have no air in your board at all which means your board will have to have a major repair job or worse than that, cannot be repaired at all and has to go straight to landfill. So before we jump into more about welded rails, I wanna go over a few of the terms you might have heard of and you don't wanna get confused with welded rails. Stuff like fusion, MSL, woven. Now fusion and MSL are referring to actually the layers that are on top and bottom of your board nothing to do with how the board is made airtight. In the past, to achieve a more hard wearing inflatable paddle board, you would have had to stick more layers of PVC on the top and bottom layers with glue. Now, all of those layers are fused together. So still heated in a process, but very much at the early stage. So that's to do with the layers of PVC, not to do with the rail construction. And also woven technology, you hear about that quite a bit. That's to do with the inside the board itself, through nylon strands or yarns, and how they are attached to the actual top and bottom layer of the board. Nothing to do with the actual rail construction. Here in front of me, I have a sample of the starboard technology, and it's a really good way of where you can actually physically see how they've actually done it. So you've got the PVC material at the top and bottom. The small dimples you can see around the board are where the yarns are connecting from the top and bottom and pulling the fabric together. That's very much giving you that solid rigid structure. The first big gray area around the rail is the initial rail brand, which is stuck on. But over the top of that, you will see that there's a thinner rail at the top and the bottom of that thicker rail piece. And this piece has been welded on over the top of that initial join. Now you can actually see that this has actually been welded together because if you look closely, you will see that the material has been melted and really squished and stuck on. There's no glue residue there. That's to do with the melting of the material. So if we compare this sample to this full starboard icon board we've got below it, you'll see that starboard icon has got a lot more rails materials on the top over the welded rails, which makes it even stiffer, even stronger, but still the first layer that could come in contact with the air or could fail has been welded. This is why sometimes when you look at a starboard board, for example, you won't actually see the welded technology on the outside of the board, it's more on the inside of the board. But as soon as welded technology has been applied onto the board, that rail will not leak through that welded technology. 
or as Starboard say, it brings that warranty rate extremely low. So if you have a glued rail, as soon as that first initial rail starts to weaken, then the air then escapes to the second layer and then it pushes and pushes until it basically comes out the side of the board. But for many of you with glued railed boards, your board might be absolutely fine for five, seven, 10 years. But then if it's been in the sun a lot, the sun will degrade that glue. Now, of course you can get those boards repaired and we would encourage you to get those boards repaired to keep them on the water for as long as possible. But remember, if one part of your glued board is coming unstuck, the chances are, the rest of the board is gonna come unstuck soon as well because it's the same age, it's been in the sun probably the same amount of time, so it is going to get affected in the same way. But with a welded rail, you have not got to worry about that. Even in the future, if the outer layers start coming off because they are glued, you can still stick them back down and your board will remain airtight. So definitely, if you're going to be buying an inflatable paddle board this year, we would strongly recommend you either buying into a starboard welded rail board or another brand that is doing welded rails. But bear in mind, there is a big difference between certain manufacturers doing welded rails compared to, for example, a brand like starboard. Obviously the pros to having a welded rail board, it is gonna last much, much longer. It's way better for the environment. And if you paddle in those hotter, sunnier countries, it's definitely well worth looking into boards with good welded rails. The only negatives are really the overall cost of your board will go up because it does require more time and skill to do a welded rail properly. So it will cost you a little bit more. So as you can see, welded rail technology used by Starboard on their rails of their ISUPs has many, many pros, and it's just one of the many features that makes them stand out from the rest. Starboard's passion and commitment for the environment and making boards that have the longest lifespan possible is great to see. Starboard are working really hard to see how they can make boards out of more environmentally friendly materials and recycle the boards and their materials into the future. So I really hope this helps you understand why you should buy into a board with welded rails. It's gonna be better for you, better for the board, and better for the environment into the future.